Countless defendants have been wrongly convicted of crimes based on mistaken eyewitness identifications. Trial courts are therefore constitutionally required to assess the reliability of an eyewitness's identification that is made during a suggestive pretrial identification procedure, such as a lineup that calls particular attention to a defendant. But what if police officers don't intentionally arrange the procedure during which an eyewitness unreliably identifies the defendant? Does the Constitution limit introduction of evidence stemming from that type of pretrial identification? The United States Supreme Court addressed this issue in Perry v. New Hampshire. A resident of an apartment complex told police officers that someone was breaking into cars in the complex's parking lot. Officer Nicole Clay encountered Barry and Perry holding car stereo equipment in the parking lot. Clay asked another officer, Robert Dunn, to stay with Perry while she went into the complex to talk to Nubia Blandon, a resident who reported having seen the perpetrator. Clay went to Blandon's apartment. When Clay asked Blandon to describe the perpetrator, Blandon, without prompting, instead gestured to the parking lot from her window. Blandon stated that Perry, who was standing next to Officer Dunn, was the perpetrator. The officers arrested Perry, who was charged with theft in state court. Perry filed a motion to exclude trial testimony that Blandon had identified Perry from her apartment window. The trial court denied the motion on the ground that, because the officers hadn't arranged a pretrial identification procedure, the Constitution didn't require any judicial assessment of the reliability of Blandon's identification of Perry before she testified at trial. At trial, Blandon testified but was unable to identify Perry as the perpetrator. Officer Clay testified that Blandon previously had identified Perry from her window. The jury convicted Perry of theft. On appeal, the New Hampshire Supreme Court affirmed Perry's conviction. Perry successfully petitioned the United States Supreme Court to review his case.